Welcome, welcome, my friends, to another episode of the Daniel Teaches Experience. Folks, this has been a tough week. If I've gone through a lot of mental ups and downs, but if there's one thing I was truly looking forward to this week, from the bottom of my heart, heads and shoulders above anything else, it was this episode with my friend Adrian. Adrian, how do you feel, my friend? How are you? I'm honored to be here. I've been listening to the podcast for a while, so I'm excited to finally be a part of it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. It's awesome to have you. Uh, for the people who most people don't know, but it's, you know, in our friend group, Adrian's house before the whole COVID happened was the, that's the go-to place. You know, we'd always go to his place and we'd have a good time and it was fun and all. And uh, this one time we're over at his place and everyone's having drinks and we're laughing pre-COVID, obviously. And, uh, and then I hear, I hear my voice on the, on the speaker. Adrian puts one of my episodes and I just remember thinking, I was like, yo, this is so weird because I, I never imagined like Daniel teaches like the YouTube guy and like me talking about it to people who I actually know, you know, I just kind of thought that I'd be like two different people. So the fact that like my friends would acknowledge the podcast, it was as if it's like, you know, Clark Kent taking off the glasses and being like, yeah, I'm Superman. <laughs> you know? So that, that was interesting. That was very interesting. Uh, yeah. I mean, I got to put you on, got to show love. So yeah. Is it weird to hear you to hear yourself on like a podcast playing or hear what you're saying? like a week ago again definitely man definitely i feel like you know when people say like oh i hate the sound of my voice like i, I kind of like the sound of my voice but it's like it's like you hear something from like a week ago or two weeks ago and you're like man i was in such a different like mind space you know like in such a different like mentality like i might have been really emotional or i might have like not known a certain piece of information when i made said claim so then like when you look back on something two or three weeks after it's like wow like sometimes i'll find myself have completely changed on a subject so yeah, man, totally, totally, totally. <laughs> Adrian, my man, you are a huge, huge, uh, what was the correct word to say? I don't want to say fan of movies because it's like everyone likes movies, but you like movies and albums a different way than a regular person likes movies and albums. For the people who are listening, who have no clue what I'm talking about, break, break down how you kind of got into, I know we talked about a little bit between me, you and, and Saho was there, but for the people listening, <laughs> How did you get into just watching? How many movies did you say you saw this year? 365? 365. Yeah, one a day. <laughs> That's insane. So just, just, just tell me and everyone listening, how the heck does one get so involved in movies? Uh, yeah, as you said, we kind of went over this like a little bit one time. But uh, so I think when I was about 15, I played a lot of video games. I spent like all my time playing video games. But I was really embarrassed by it. I, I didn't want to tell anybody that because I thought, like, I knew in my head it was a waste of time. Uh, <laughs> so when people started asking me about, like, what I did in my spare time, I would just lie. I would just say, I watch movies, right? And then, of course, they would follow up with the inevitable, what have you seen recently or what kind of stuff do you like? And, of course, because I, hadn't, I didn't have any answer. And I didn't like that I had to lie because I, I just don't like lying. So I decided, I think 10th grade spring break, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna watch just the basics, you know, enough to hold a conversation with anybody. Uh, so I started with, you know, like like Pulp Fiction, you know, The Godfather shot, like real like basic movies that everybody's seen. But then as it went on, uh, my mind, like the way I thought about what was mandatory expanded and it became more and more stuff. I was like, oh, I have to see this. I have to see this. And now I've seen probably 1200 movies since then. And I'm still thinking to myself, oh, I have to see more. I have to see more. I have to see more. And kind of the same thing happened with the albums as well, because I just, I would be in conversation with people and they'd bring up like James Brown or The Strokes. And I would go, I don't know their music that well. <laughs> and I was kind of embarrassed by it. So I decided to do something about it and just get into it. Holy smokes, man. That's incredible. Now, Adrian, from someone who's seen so many movies, give me Adrian's formula for what makes a good movie. Like, like everything. Like, talk about characters. I mean, you know, actors, plot, uh, you know, director. Like, what, how can you make a good film? Or what do, what do good films have in common? That I used to think I had the answer for. Uh, when I was about 16 or 17, I would have given you a bunch of things. Like, a good movie is something that, uh, you know, has like a, a well-structured uh, story that doesn't have any like fat on it and it's lean. And then they probably evolved. And most recently, I think at the beginning of last year, I used to just think simply put, good move, uh, provoke thought, right? That was, uh, I, I boiled it down to that. I said, all that other stuff, a movie can have, you know, uh, like a boring story and still be a great movie. 
right? But a good movie provokes thought. And then I, I kind of thought about that more and I ruled that out as well because I saw stuff that, you know, wasn't that thought provoking, but I still thought it was really good. And I saw stuff that I thought brought up a lot of concepts and introduced a lot of things, but still managed to be kind of empty in their own ideas. Um, so at this point, I actually don't think there's any specific one hard and fast rule about what makes a good movie, uh, which is something that's definitely changed a lot. Yeah. What do you think? I, um, you know, and that's the, the reason why I brought that question up was because just recently I've been watching a plethora of movies. And the two that I just saw back to back that have nothing to do with each other was, I believe it was like Mission Impossible 3. And then I saw, um, have you seen The Hateful Eight by any chance? It's on Netflix, uh, Samuel yeah. L. Jackson, or a few other guys. And I just remember comparing those two movies, right? One of them, a hundred people die. You're in three or four different countries. It's very fast paced. The other one is a little bit more slow paced. They're building, it's a lot of talking. And it's, you know, you, in one sense, if you really get used to that fast tempo, the other one kind of feels slow. You know, watching a Godfather feels really slow because there's just talking, quote unquote. But if, if you don't compare it to anything else, and if you just look at, let's say, The Godfather on its own, or like Gentleman is another one I saw on Netflix, you know, or, um, or like Hateful Eight. And it's like, you, you appreciate those kind of Quentin Tarantino, those build up, you know, the talking, and then just the unexpected twist at the end. And um, I have absolutely no clue, Adrian, because I like them both. I like both styles of movies, but I could not compare them to each other because they have like, like some of them are just so, you know what, sometimes, man, the only thing that kind of pushes me away from a movie is when I feel like there's unnecessary screen time. For example, there's two characters talking, but they're talking about something that isn't huge to either character development or the plot as a whole. And if it's like a three hour long movie, I'm like, oh man, maybe we could, uh, you know, what do you think about that? I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. I definitely used to think that way. Now my case have evolved and I like things that are very slow. Like you mm -hmm. brought up The Godfather. I think The Godfather is a, a fast movie for me. Oh my God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm used to seeing stuff that's slower, like no conflict. That's the type of stuff that I like. Oh, um, I but you know, I can, I can look back and think about how I used to think of movies and I can understand where you're coming from. Mm. Uh, you know, when I first got into it, I was more elitist with it. I was like, you don't like this movie, then you have bad taste. You, mm. You're not getting it, right? But now, because I understand that my taste has changed, that other people won't always see eye to eye with me. Um, and I think that's actually led to me having like a greater appreciation of movies that I don't like. And that's something that I never thought I was going to be able to say that I can not like a movie, but still really, really appreciate it. Whoa. That's very mature of you. <laughs> oh, smokes, man. Talk, talk to me about actors, Adrian. What are a few actors that have stood out to you? Or what are a few actors that, that you really like, that you like following? Or is there no one really? Is it just they're all in the same category? I mostly follow more directors than actors. But of course, directors have their favorite actors. Um, mm. Like recently, I've been watching a lot of Ingmar Bergman, uh, a lot of Swedish stuff. Got to rep the, the roots. Of course, of course. Uh, and, and he, of course, uh, has Liv Ullman in his movies a lot. And I, I, I love her. I think she's great in everything she's in. Uh, but I've never seen anything with her in it that wasn't directed by him. Uh, so I don't know. It, it just tends to be that I don't follow actors that much. And I just mm. follow the directors. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, directors don't... Yeah. Sorry, what oh, was that, AJ? <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> Uh, do you think about the directors of the movies you watch a lot, or are you are you mostly like an actors or genre would, type person? I would say, my friend, it's definitely like 80-20, like for actors. I'm very actor heavy, so I'll see, you know, the the typical names, the, the Leonardo DiCaprio's, you know, or the Mark Wahlberg's, you know, Will Ferrell, those guys. But I feel like directors don't get as much love as they nearly should. You know, do you think it's it's better that way? Like, do they want to be out of the scene, or do you think they deserve more more love and more appreciation for those movies that they put out? would be better if they kind of got more attention because um, it's something that we saw in the 60s uh, directors tend to be more you know celebrity and they'd mm. be like in the press uh, and I think it led to more interesting discussion on film because they were all celebrities and they all had like respect for each other but they would like kind of like insult each other's movies and you could see the insights um, and sometimes it'd be like radically different I think with a movie that uh, I, I for the people that don't know, on my Instagram, I just posted a list of my, my favorite or best movies I saw all year. And one of them was, oh, Al Hazard, Al Hazard, uh, Balthazar. 
Uh, and it's a movie that I think Ingmar Bergman, the director I was just talking about, um, he thought was excellent and Jean-Luc Godard thought was terrible, right? Hmm. And you could hear both of the things they said and they completely conflicting, but that's something you don't really hear anymore because directors don't get really get the spotlight. So they don't have the chance to talk about other directors work. Um, and that's something that I think would be really nice if we could just hear what, you know, Barry Jenkins thought about uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I'm just going with like super common stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of do wish that directors got more attention in that way, just so you could hear what they have to think. Very interesting. Now, Adrian, with your love for movies, would you ever want to be in a movie? Like, would you ever, even as an extra, as a producer, like, would that ever be on the bucket list? Doesn't have to be like a full time thing, but. Thought about it a lot. Um, I think I'd actually really love to be an editor. Uh, and it's something that I kind of dipped my toes into editing some stuff last year. Uh, haven't been, or I guess 2019 now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Holy shoot, uh, man. <laughs> um but you know i'm really not sure i i actually was a, an extra in a, a little local movie recent or that's awesome man what's it called yeah uh it was called oh man <laughs> come on baby come on it was uh it was something all uh all in madonna it was all just a madonna. super small movie it, it was at the vancouver film festival i think back in december Still haven't seen it though. The movie that I'm in, I still haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh that's hilarious, dude. Man, that's so funny. Uh, Adrian, just last thing on the on the movies. Is there a genre that you don't touch? Is there a genre that you're like, oh, you know, man, romantic comedy not for me, or horror not for me? Like, is there something that you 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 try to stay away from? One of my one of my pet peeves is when people kind of write off a whole genre of movies, or they write off <sighs> an era, or. Some people will be like, oh, I don't like black and white stuff. And I think that doesn't make any sense because it's still the movie the same, it's just different colors. Um, mm. So I I got to be a man of my own words. So I watch everything, even though I don't really like Westerns that much. I still watch a hell of a lot of them just because I feel like I should. A lot of them are classics. So I try to watch everything. I don't stay away from anything. That's beautiful, Adrian. That's beautiful, man. That's awesome. <laughs> you heard it, folks. The man does not discriminate. <laughs> so my friend you briefly mentioned um you know technically like last year was 2020 you know tell me about what what did quarantine look like for you man like i know i know everyone they can't wait to get away from 2020 but i think i think it was an important role that it played in our lives for a very very long time and now that we're in january 2021 i know that we're still technically in quarantine we're still in, in like the lockdown phases but when it when it was what was your first time that you heard about covid and just kind of walk me through you know what your mindset was like even from like 2019 december to you know 2020 march to the summer and just, just all that, man. Give me Adrian's perspective on COVID, on the lockdown, and, and how it affected your lifestyle. <laughs> um, so in the beginning, I, of course, was aware of it. And I wasn't like being like, oh, it's not real or anything. But I, I wasn't super focused on it. I was like, eh, that, it'll go away. Uh, just like everybody else thought. <laughs> uh, and then it was a bit ironic because back in early March, I was getting just like tired of going out all the time. I was like, I, I just want to stay home now. And I was about to just throw up, like take take a week off, just stay home all week. Um, and then of course the lockdown hit and it was like, okay, now you have to. And I was like, oh, no complaints <laughs> from me. I was gonna do it anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lasted a bit longer than I wanted it to, uh -huh. but you know, that's fine. Um, but it's, I, I felt like I kind of just followed the, the this is kind of what everybody else thought thinking like, oh, this sucks, but it'll go away. And now I'm like, oh, well, you know, it isn't going to go away for a while. You got to wear a mask and all that. Um, but in a way, I actually kind of appreciated being in quarantine. Of course, I, I know I'm in a, in a spot of privilege to say that because I didn't lose my job or anything. I didn't get evicted or anything. Uh, but because of it, I, I took about, I took a couple of days and I just focused on my goals. I wrote them down. I created a timeline of things I wanted to do. Just like you, I'm, I'm a goals focused person. So <laughs> I, I created this big spreadsheet of my one year, two year, five year, uh, 10 year, like lifetime goals and things I wanted to, things that books I wanted to read, uh, skills I wanted to learn. And it made me just feel so much more organized and 
prepared for the future than I was before. So I do appreciate what quarantine brought in a little bit. What about you? How was your experience with it? Okay, I'm going to say my bit, and then we got to go back to you, because I got so excited to hear that you're, you're goal-oriented, man. That's awesome. Uh, my bit, man, what I remember is, I remember this, it was like a freaking like zombie apocalypse, right? It, it's 2019, like November, right? Or 2020, excuse me, or 2019 December. And I'm sitting at, at UVic's like cafeteria, and I'm by myself, and I've got my earbuds in, and I'm eating food, and there was someone sitting across from me, I don't remember who. And I'm talking to them just like this. But over their shoulder, I can see a TV. And on that TV, I see this, this what appears to be a Chinese man being carted out. And, and it's the news. And they're talking about, you know, there's something going on in China, but they're not talking about it. You know, they're, they're not letting any reporters voice their opinions. And I just remember thinking, like, huh, like, I wonder if that'll turn into something. Now, if you would have put a gun to my head, I would have been like, hey, man, whatever that is, I don't think it's going to leave that country. Like, I don't think it's going to affect anyone else, let alone the whole freaking world. But I remember I was thinking, I was like, man, like, that's weird. And then it wasn't until, um, I think it was March, where the day or two days before, like, everything got locked down, you know, UVic closed. I had this prof that was like, hey, guys, you know, like, don't worry. Like, everything's going to be fine. Like, the media is just trying to make it bigger than it is. I'll see you guys on Monday. Well, Saturday hit. <laughs> 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 we get the email, right? And like, like UVic's closed, everything's closed. He emails us. He's like, so I might have been wrong. <laughs> and uh, he's like, but he was such an angel, man. He goes, you know what, guys? This is such a stressful time. I'm just going to cancel our final exam. Just forget about it, man. No exam, no final paper. Just be on your way. So that was, that was my introduction to kind of this, this world of COVID. And very much like yourself, Adrian, you know, I thought like, okay, you know, what can I do with what I have? right? I can't control COVID, right? I can't make a vaccine myself. So I'm in this predicament, right? I'm stuck at home. What can I do that is the most effective? And I started to really manage. I started to read books more than I've ever read before. I started to exercise more. I started to look into things that I've never looked at before. I've started to look at goals and just so many things that, you know, because school takes up a lot of your time, you know, or work takes up a lot of your time. And then when you have this, this fresh slate, it's like, if I could learn anything in the world, what can I learn? What skill could I learn today that can make me better tomorrow, right? And then, uh, you know, that was going well. Anyways, man, long story short, we're still going through it. You know, um, I, at first I was like, oh, this is fun. This is exciting. You know, oh, mask, oh, you know. And uh, now I'm like, all right, you know, this, this COVID stuff is whatever, but I'm ready to, you know, for hopefully for everybody to listen, for us to just be good little boys and girls, and then we can go back to our regular lives. That's where I live. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Adrian, back to you, man. So you, you have this time, right? You're, you're sitting and you're like, all right, man, we're in COVID. How, what? Oh, man, there's so many, I'm so excited. Like, how do I approach this? Okay, let's wait. <laughs> all right, so when, when thinking about goals, right? Because a lot of people have goals, right? Whether they say them consciously or whether subconsciously, you have things that you want to do. What, what made you want to write them down, Adrian? Why write them down? Why, why give them a timeline? I think it's because I kind of had everything in my mind but I never thought about what it would actually look like to achieve them. Um, so something, I only speak one language. I don't know about you. Do you, do you speak another language? Two, my friend. I speak Farsi as well. You speak two. Oh, that's amazing, right? And uh, I see other people who speak multiple languages, and I think it's awesome, right? I think, I think highly of them. Uh, and I have this philosophy that however I think about, however I would think about other people, I apply that to myself. Mm. So if I would think highly of somebody if they learn another language, then I myself should take that step and learn a language myself. So I went to learn either Swedish or French. And it's something that I've always been had in my mind. Uh, another thing is I really want to get contact lenses. I hate these guys. I Aww. hate them, right? <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> I hate wearing them all the time. <laughs> um, but, and I have those goals in my mind, but I never thought about what like it would actually look like to achieve them. So being able to pinpoint, oh, I could get contacts in within a couple of months with just in practice, even though I'm very afraid of touching my eyes. Um, but learning French would take, that would, that's like a more throughout my whole life goal. Um, so just being aware of that made me be able to prioritize what I actually wanted to learn. And I mean, I can pick up my camera and you can see that I, uh, I, got, a, I got a keyboard. So you can see that was on my list. And that was something that I, I thought I should learn within the next year, which is something I've been steadily practicing. And I thought as just being aware of a goal and going, this is when I want to have it done by and working towards it with a specific end date in mind 
feels very good just being on track with what you want to do. So I think that's why I really liked writing everything down. I'm happy to hear it, man. Now, Adrian, do you, have you, I'm sure you've come into contact with people who don't seem to have any goals, right? Or they don't have anything to look forward to. I've heard from multiple people that one of the benefits of having a goal is that, you, like you mentioned it yourself, it keeps you on track, right? You have something that you're going after, right? You know that you're bettering yourself. It, it almost adds extra purpose, extra meaning, right? To why you get up every day. It gives you something to do. It makes you feel productive. And I really feel like some people who don't have goals, they, they lose that, you know, they lose that sense of almost that, that extra meaning or that extra feel of purpose and really, you know, trying to better yourself. But what, what do you think about that? Uh, I actually have to disagree a little bit. I feel like everybody does have goals. I think it's just mm. that it's easy to get distracted and forget about them. Just simply put, it's so easy to, you know, get caught up in whatever you're doing day to day and just forget about, oh yeah, I wanted, I wanted to learn Spanish. Mm. So <laughs> I feel like it's less about a person not having goals and more about a person forgetting about them. Uh, but I do get what you mean. It's the people who are engaged in what they want to achieve tend to have or attain some sort of fulfillment from that. Very interesting. Now, Adrian, what's the difference? Like, let's say me and you are both going after our goals and I keep, you know, like you said, like forgetting, or I keep pushing it off and procrastinating. Whereas you, you're on it every single day. What, why is it that one person can be so engaged and so, you know, on their right path and the other person can just veer away? You know, how does that happen? Honestly. <laughs> Take a guess, my friend. There's no wrong answer. What, what would you guess? You're a very intelligent guy. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so much pressure. <laughs> um, I feel like it is... Oh, jeez. You know, let me, let me turn it back to you. What do you think? What do you yeah. think is the difference? Now, I don't know if this is the right answer. But again, just on the spot, we're just sharing our, our opinions, again, not a fact. I believe that a huge, one huge factor would have to be this feeling of urgency, you know, this feeling of, I have to do this now. For example, like getting in shape, you know, a lot of people think, well, I can, I can work out later, you know, or I can skip the workout today. But if, you know, you sat down with a doctor and they said, hey, listen, you can't keep going on like this. You know, if you keep repeating these unhealthy patterns, you got six months to live tops. I feel like that sense of urgency of you have to do it now. You know, there's no time to wait. I think that would definitely play a huge factor in someone, you know, accomplishing their. So let's say, Adrian, we're dating, right? And, you know, and you're like, you know what, Daniel? I'm sick of this motivational <laughs> stuff. You either got to be up on TED by the end of this year or I'm leaving you, right? That time crunch should be like, all right, I got to please my partner, right? I got to, there's just another added factor. And I feel like that feeling of urgency, that feeling of right now, do it now. I can't push it off would make me prioritize it amongst other things. And I believe that would be one thing that would make me closer to achieving my goal. Then let's say someone who doesn't view it as, a, as an urgent thing or as, a, as an important thing. Yeah, I, I, I can see what you mean. Just having that like monkey on your back being mm. like, hey, hey, <laughs> get on it. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, huh. another thing that I think can make a difference is momentum. Because when you're trying to even do something simple as doing like homework, right? Mm -hmm. When you have one thing that was completed, even if it was yesterday, right? That keeps you in the state of just doing more and more. So I think if you, like the difference between some people and how their work ethic is, I think is largely uh, caused by like a state of inertia. So if someone just fell out of it for a bit, it's going to be a whole lot harder for them to get back into it and build that habit of, say, getting into shape. You know, it's a whole lot harder to get in, get to the gym every day if you don't already have a routine. Mm. That's a very good point, my friend. That's a very good point. Very good point. Huh. Yeah, no, I can see that. I was I curious about something. That. Yeah, go for it, brother. Um. This is a bit unrelated, but it's something I was thinking about before we hopped on the podcast. Uh -huh. uh, but it's about the podcast itself. Cool. So when you started the podcast, what did it initially mean to you? What did that represent? Uh, and has that changed at all since you've been doing it? Because you've been doing this for some time now. So how has it, uh, how has your perception of your own podcast changed? 
That's a fantastic question, my friend. Let me take a sip and I'll, I'll get back to you. Here, I'll drink some water too. <laughs> mm-hmm. How has my perception of the podcast changed? That is a very good question. So originally when I started this thing, to be completely honest with you, it was just me wanting to express my thoughts and wondering if anyone else had the same opinion as I did. So a lot of times, you know, what many people don't know was actually I used to journal in high school. I used to journal a lot. And, you know, when I say journal, I don't mean, you know, dear diary, Stacy was mean to me today. Like, no, not in that sense, right? But for example, I might say something like, you know, I was at work today and uh, we needed a leader to step up. And when people looked around, I did not want to step up. I wanted to be the last person to step up. And I thought, why did I feel that way? I said, well, you know, I thought maybe if I stepped up, you know, uh, people would depend on me. And if I failed, I wasn't only letting myself down, but I was letting the team down. So I felt angry. So you kind of just get into those thoughts. And then next time when that situation occurred, because you realize how you felt, you can catch yourself in those feelings and then you can take a step forward. Or anyways, or so that, that's what ended up happening to me. So what I ended up doing was I decided instead of writing this down, let me put this in a video form or in a way where I can speak. And then I wonder if other people think the same way that I do, or maybe even better, what if they disagree with me? And what if they have like better advice? You know, what if they're like, hey, Daniel, like I see what you're going, but have you ever tried this? And I was like, you know what? Like just for the sake of acquiring knowledge, I feel like we should make this podcast, right? Talk about different states of life, philosophy, psychology, you know, and very rooted in mental health and kind of just see what people think and what people say. So what started from that turned into very recently in the last month or two, I was just sitting around being like, man, like I'm a big like MMA, like, you know, fighting fan or whatever. And I was watching this, this pay-per-view and I was like, man, like, I really want to talk about like what I just saw. Like, I really want to talk to someone about it. I was like, I wish I could talk about it on the podcast. And I was like, you know, wait a minute. Who says you can't? Like, I'm the, I'm the writer. I'm the producer. I'm the, the, you know, executive producer. I'm just like, why not? Let's do it. And then eventually what started off from this podcast of just mental health and, you know, just psychology really turned into, you know, I have some podcasts, man, talking about, you know, like sleep and some other ones talking about um, like the wilderness and self-defense. Some talking about MMA. And, and what I've really come to realize is, you know, this is so much bigger than just like, like you could just narrow it down. Cause that's what I was thinking at first, like just, just one topic, but let's say Adrian, when I bring you on, it would be a shame if me and you only talked psychology and I'll tell you why you are very unique, right? I, everybody has a story to tell, right? Everybody has a background. And if I bring you on and let's say you've got this, these crazy goals of learning, you know, to speak Swedish or French and playing keyboard, I should, instead of being in that tunnel, I, I should, what's the word I'm looking for? appreciate and praise the uniqueness that every individual brings to the podcast. So that's, if I'm speaking with a psychology student, let's speak psychology, let's go for it. I'm not saying that we can't speak psychology, but I think to dismiss, you know, the story that you bring to the table, Adrian, and the story that, you know, let's say my other friend brings, who's, you know, really big into entrepreneurship and my other friend brings, who's just really big into chess. I think that'd be a foolish thing to do. And I think if anything, this podcast just turned into like, Let's have an awesome discussion. Let's have fun. And let's just learn, man. Let's just, let's just learn from each other. You know, let's share experiences and stories and just perceptions and how people think. And I've, I've, I'm so much more appreciative for how other people's mind works and how, like what you tell me, Adrian, right? Like your mind thinks a certain way, right? You think of a concept and then you try to articulate that concept to me, right? You try to water that down in a way so that I can understand. And then I hear said concept and I only pick up like, let's say 50% of it, like realistically. And then I try to explain that to my other friend, like, Hey, I was talking to Adrian and he said this, but by the time I break it down and articulate that thought, it's something totally different. So long story short, my friend, I, I really appreciate everyone's differences and how much you can learn from a simple conversation. <laughs> huh, that's interesting. So kind of at the beginning, you thought about more of it as an expression of self, and now it's turned into more kind of finding that uh, like Venn diagram of you and another person and where you can meet and where you can share ideas with each other and pass over. That's really nice. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you. We've, we've come a long way, and I'm, I'm just super stoked to have so many people on, including yourself, Adrian. I think it's so awesome, man. I think discussions are beautiful. I think when you talk with your friends, it's beautiful. And I think disagreeing is so amazing, man. Because if everybody thought the exact same way as you did, it's like, you know, 
what, but you want people to disagree, right? You want, you know, Adrian to come in the screen and just slap me in the face and say, no, this is how it is. Like you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. That's something that I've, I've grown to appreciate a lot more because I used to just love meeting people like myself. Right. Mm. And they, you know, you, you can, when you can talk to somebody and just right off the bat, you can go like, oh, I think this. And they go, oh, I think that too. It's like, oh, that's exciting. But like we meet together on that. But somehow it becomes like a lot more meaningful when you talk to somebody that has a, had very different experiences with you. And then you can find something right through, through all this like effort of getting to know each other uh, and just discussion. Uh, what you can agree on together and then when you do that it, I feel like it kind of just unlocks everything else and you can look at all their other ideas through the lens of what you do already understand Whoa. <laughs> Adrian man you know what I just realized I look at people the way you look at movies even the ones I don't love, I still unbelievably appreciate. I like that a lot. <laughs> hey man, it's all you, man. You planted that little thing in my head in my subconscious and boom, that's where it comes from. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. One thing I've been doing recently is, uh, you know at work, sometimes you get, you get those bad customers and they of end course. up being the regular ones. Uh, <laughs> and it's easy to get frustrated sure. and go like, oh, I don't like that person. But I've, I've, I've set a rule in my head that says, I can't dislike anyone, right? I have to like everyone, right? It's mandatory because you don't, right? Even if you feel that it's right to dislike someone, you still don't enjoy it, mm, right? You're right. You're right? So there's no point in doing something or even thinking about something that you don't enjoy. So I've started just looking at people and trying to see everything, no matter how difficult it is, and just like really understand them and really go, you're like the most interesting person in the world. And I just want to hear more from you. And because of that, just that appreciation, it makes me naturally like them a lot more too. It's that just, you know, momentum. <laughs> I'm going to bring back momentum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just that initial uh, seed in your head of just being like, oh, I like this person leads to you having a really deep appreciation of them. Adrian, how do you how do you go about doing that, man? Because you say it and it sounds great, but but like to actually imagine a customer who's just let's say for the sake of argument they're rude and they're always grumpy and like how do you how do you constantly how like how hard is it or, or no is it does it is it actually super easy to put yourself into that mindset? Um, the simplest way I think about it is okay. So let's take you for an example. You're a very pleasant guy. You're super positive. But you certainly, you know, there's been moments in your life that have been difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? But you're still positive. Yeah. So if you take somebody who's super, super negative, right? A person who just complains about everything, you got to think about what have they been through to make them like that, mm. right? And once you start to, to imagine like, oh, they probably have a very tough life, then it's much easier to be gentle with them. And it's much easier to be compassionate because you know that even though they're not telling you, there must be something in their life that's just not clicking or there's something that's deeply challenging them or troubling them. And just having that, that basic empathy about something that you don't even know anything about, that's all you need. That's all you need. That is so smart, Adrian. So, so if I understood you correctly, you know, when you look at a person, you just remind yourself and you say, you know, I don't know what you've been through. Right. I don't know what, you know, you might be in a bad mood. You might just got into an argument with your wife, right? Maybe something just went wrong. So maybe that understanding that there's where that compassion, that kindness comes from. And because of that, it becomes a lot easier not to, you know, hate on that guy or, or treat him the same way. Wow. That's awesome. Adrian. What a beautiful man. If everybody was just, if everyone had that mindset, Adrian, could you imagine the world? <laughs> Oh, man. And something else that is a similar thought to that. Yeah, so yeah. you think about, uh, you know, certain uh, philosophies or ideologies mm -hmm. or thought processes you have, and you go, wouldn't it be great if other people thought the same way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's an infinite amount of other ideas 
that you are not aware of that other people think about and they go, I wish you had that or not you specifically. I wish everybody had that. So I find it very interesting just oh. talking to people about these things to see what they think is, is should be prioritized. I've never thought about that. That's so interesting. Hmm. Wow. That's very interesting. Thinking about just last night, actually, um, was that when I think about myself, I think about uh, the things that I, I value in other people. And I think it's important to be cultured. I think it's important to present yourself nicely. I think it's important to, you know, just be a generous person, be engaged, right? And I look at people who kind of may not have those traits in the same volume that I expect. Uh, and I go, well, why not, right? Wouldn't it be great if you, you thought those things? And sometimes I, I see people and I go, well, you have, you don't really have any of those things. You don't prioritize any of that. And I'll see that person as like an example of what I, what I kind of don't want to be. But then I thought about it a little bit more. And I realized that I am probably that person to somebody else. There's probably somebody out there that thinks about me and they go, why don't you think this is important? Why don't you work on yourself so that way you can develop this attitude, this mindset, um, these skills to become the type of person that I think people should be. That was so interesting how like other people have completely different ideas of what is absolutely essential to being like a, just a good or interesting person. And I'm always curious about what people think is important to being a good or interesting or valuable person. So that's just a thought that I've been kicking it around my head a couple of days ago. That's a very interesting thought, my friend, because for the longest time, I've been thinking about bringing on guests. Like, imagine, like, bringing on, like, a hardcore, like, Christian, you know, whole nine yards, goes to church with a guy who's, like, not religious at all, right? Or imagine someone who, you know, is a homosexual, bring him on with someone who's, you know, super religious and looks at that as a sin. Like, just not to just, like, look, you know, with popcorn and laugh, <laughs> you know, watch them fight, but <laughs> just in terms of, you know, if you could somehow you know, initiate discussion between two people who have completely different political beliefs and completely different religious ideologies. And, and just what you were saying, you know, you have this, this certain values in life when you're going, I, I will die on this hill that what I believe is right. You know, whether you want to talk about, um, you know, like if everything, man, from like abortion to like eating certain things, you know, the thoughts on alcohol, like, like there's so many things that people disagree on. And they're like, there's just one scene, man, in, um, in, in Captain America uh, Civil War. <laughs> and and there's this is one part where like you got Peter Parker, Tom Holland, and he's kind of like fighting with Chris Evans. And then uh, you know, he does something to him, and then and then uh, Chris Evans, Captain America's like, you know, well, what else did you know Iron Man tell you about me? And Peter Parker's like, well, you know, he said to go for your legs. And he also said that you're wrong and that you think you're right, and that makes you dangerous. Like, just think about that. And like you're wrong, obviously, in Peter Parker's eyes. You're wrong, but you think you're right, and that makes you dangerous. Now, I, I don't know about the first part, but, like, if someone really, like, Hitler thought he was right, right? Like, Hitler 100% thought he was doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and knowing how, if someone's like, I, I will swear to you this is the right way to go about it, it's almost, I don't want to say scary, but how much they will, like, cling to that ideology. Like, like it's, it becomes a part of them. You know, and, and when you attack that ideology, you know, hey, Adrian, man, you know, man, I disagree. You know, I, I think, you know, not eating pork is silly, right? It's like I'm attacking you, like Adrian, the person, because you and that idea have almost become one. You know, like you're just so I think I think it's fascinating, man, just to see how how there is so much disagreement in the world. Like even like that George Floyd thing, right? Even like Black Lives Matter, man. Like like even when you think that no one can disagree. I'm yet again surprised. Like you could say the sky's blue and some schmuck will say, I think it's purple. Like, you know? Uh, yeah. It, it's kind of incredible just to think about, because sometimes you just have an idea and you're like, well, duh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> There's no other way of thinking about this. Yeah. And it always, 
it just fascinates me how people can have these different ideas and be so far apart and so like set in place. Yeah. yeah. I think for the most part, that's okay. You know, it was actually, a... mm -hmm. yeah, what were you going to say? So, so that quote, uh, I was binge, binge listening. I don't know. What do you do to podcast? Binge listening. <laughs> binge listening. Uh, to a couple so. of your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> to a couple of your podcast last night, and I heard you bring up that same. Oh Captain no way! Sick. Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. No way. No uh, way. <laughs> so I'm just curious. Back to what I was saying about the, you know, how your opinion of the podcast has changed. Do you ever say things and bring them up maybe multiple times on podcast, and your ideas about them have completely changed? And do you ever feel that you have a need to correct yourself in what you previously said um, or make any adjustments or edits? Definitely, man. Definitely. Uh, I think, that, you know, I, I like to be as, as constant as possible. So, you know, I don't want to come on here and talk about guys, you know, you got to work hard. You got to have patience. And the next podcast is guys, you got to look for shortcuts. You got to, you know, <laughs> go with like, it's, <laughs> poor guy's going to lose his mind. Listen to me. But on the other hand, man, I feel like, there's that balance right where you don't want to always change your mind but i think you know when i realize that oh man like it's happened so many times adrian like i can't even count the amount of times i've just like listened to one of my like older podcasts i'm like dude like i can't believe i think that way i'm on completely the other side ever since you know i talked to sasha and we blah 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 and um definitely i, I feel like i make a new podcast you know and i if i remember to and i say hey you know this is these are my things on this subject now i used to think that and now I think this, and a part of me feels a little bad because I remember like how hard I was going in that first one, you know, like this is the way it is, man. And da -da -da, right. So then when I make another one, I'm like, Hey, so actually uh, I don't think like that anymore. A little bit is a uh, man. Like I, I wish I didn't have to do it. You know, I wish I could just be right all the time. I wish everything I said was just, Mwah. but life isn't like that. And I think for me to, to come on the podcast and say, Hey guys, you know, I was totally wrong about this. You know, I made a mistake. Um, that's not how it is. I think, I think it's really good. I think it's really good for me to be able to practice saying I made a mistake because I feel like that's something that I, I really want to work on, man. Like, I think it's so important to just, and it's so better for you, you know, when, when you change your mind, like it's okay to change your mind, right? You're going to learn and grow and you're going to get older and, and it's okay. And on the other side, you know, when people hear me say that, you know, I feel like, it kind of knocks me down off of any high horse that they might have. Because Daniel teaches is kind of like a like a deceiving name. Because you think, like, oh, he's going to come teach me something. When in reality, when you show up with questions, you're probably going to leave with more questions. Like, if you've heard any episode, you know I'm an idiot. You know that, like, in every episode, I'm like, God, you say that. No, no, no. I swear to God, <laughs> every episode, I'm like, I could be wrong. I'm like, oh, you know? <laughs> like, so maybe, man, who knows? Am I wrong about this? Like, DM me, email me, you know? And when you do that, it really it humbles you, man. It, it's good. It's good. So far, like, here's the thing, man, Adrian, this podcast will never be worse than it is right now. And what I mean by that is it'll only get better in the future, or so I hope. Fingers crossed. Like, like hopefully it doesn't get worse than this. That's, that's all I mean to say. And I bet you I'm doing some things right now that in two, three years of time, I look back and I'm like, oh, man, like, yikes, like, I did that? Or I said this? Or I, I feel like it. I feel like, because I've had this time, like, I've had this happen so many times. Or in the moment, it sounds great. And obviously, in hindsight, I'm like, oh, gee, when, why didn't I think that was a good idea? And I'll just pick apart whatever I'm doing right now. But as for right now, fingers crossed, we're doing okay. You know, we haven't gotten canceled yet. We're still, you know, we're still going. Adrian decided to come on the podcast. So things are looking pretty good. Things are looking good. On a similar note, um, if you ever look back at one of your old podcasts and you realize that something you said was despicable and information you provided was uh completely wrong mm -hmm. and was spreading like a like a false narrative or you know you thought it was harmful for people to listen to the podcast mm -hmm. would you ever consider deleting that episode oh man you know uh, hmm i i, I want to say yes like, like if it's if it's you're saying like it's harmful for people to listen to and like indirectly I'm inciting violence or something that's just you know or I'm saying you know vaccines cause autism like something completely wrong, and man what I that's a very good question. If you were in my spot, Adrian, what would you do? I think, yeah, I, I would, mm -hmm. but it's also a matter of 
it's it's not my podcast. <laughs> so as I was mentioning earlier, like what it represents to you, because you could see it as keeping that up is it's serving as accountability. Mm-hmm. It's making you say, you know, I said these things and I, I, I have to own up to them. Um, so it, I think it, the crux of this question is really, you know, like, what do you, what do you value in the episodes themselves? Man. I value in those episodes. Man, you know, I think I, I really value, like, without coming off as, like, posh or arrogant, but, like, I really value the way I speak. And what I mean by that is, like, I feel like the brain is so interesting that sometimes I just love list. like, man, this is such a Kanye thing to say, but I love listening to myself and just picking apart the brilliance <laughs> and just being like, my God, this is amazing. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm joking i'm joking no i'm not so anyways as i'm picking apart the brilliance right and I, no, just hear me out <laughs> just hear me out okay right? and, and i go and i go man this guy's amazing that's it no i'm just joking that's not it but but i, I am very interested to, to just like if you just break down like how how I articulate things or really how anyone talks, I find very fascinating. Cause I'm like, you know, why did he use this specific word? You know, why did I use that analogy? You know, how, cause why did I paint this picture? You know, what kind of perspective was I to say what I said? So going back to that question earlier, you know, if I made an episode where everything's wrong, I'd be so curious as to where I was mentally to make such claims. You know, like, where was I coming from? What was my perspective? And how come I don't see the way that I do now? And I think, you know, the first thing that would have come to mind was if it was not to delete it, it was to make a a counter episode that was literally like meant to be like, hey, like, I want you to watch that first episode where I was completely wrong. And I'll tell you I was wrong as a setup to watching the second episode. And, And if I could spin that into like a teachable moment of look at like how completely off the fence I was. But look at how, like, where I've come to, and I could address that, you know, and I could talk about it. Like, the only reason I would save that first episode, that, that way we agreed was wrong and despicable and harmful, you know, would to be like, I'd put like warnings on it, and I'd put like a before, like, you watch, like, the first 10 seconds, make sure you watch this other video. You know, this is only for like a learning experiment, right? And my thoughts have completely changed, and blah, blah, blah. But if I didn't do that, man, you're right. I, I would delete it. I would delete it. Man, you really put me on the spot there, Adrian. You really put me on the, you just like, let me hear it. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> just start talking away, man. You know one thing I want to work on, Adrian? What do you want to work on? I would like to slow down. I get excited. What do you mean by that? I get excited and I start speaking really fast. And when that happens, it's okay. But I feel as if, you know, one, it, it makes it harder for someone else to want to chime into the conversation. Because they're like, I'll just wait until he finishes speaking. But sometimes we're just talking about motivation and discipline and agent. It's so amazing. And you got to go after it. Blah, 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 blah. And I feel like not only is it better for the person listening to this so he doesn't lose his mind, not only is it better for the guest so he, he doesn't get bored. Because, you know, you never want to ramble on about something. And I think it's better for me, too, because this way, sometimes I feel, especially in the beginning of these podcasts, when I first started, I hated silence like this. I hated it because I exactly because I thought, oh, man, I have to keep talking like there can't be a moment of silence. Like, they, like they, I have like, I don't know why but I, I've just really begun to, and I'm still working on it. Just being OK with just chilling out a little bit. Right. And it's not saying don't talk. Right. It's not saying talk less. But especially for me, you know, like, Daniel, you, you're bringing guests on. Right. I, I want you to talk. I'm happy to talk. But if I brought you on, because I've seen some of those interviews, man, they bring the guest on and the host just keeps cutting him off or he starts answering his own questions. Like, why did you invite him on? So let me spin this. Let me ask you, Adrian, what makes a good host, a good talk show host, a good podcast host? (laughs) I think one of the most important things is just being involved in the things that you're talking to people about. Because I could, if, if I, if I was like a, like a talk show host mm-hmm. and I had somebody on who was a, um, I don't know, a painter and I knew nothing about painting, right? Even if I'm asking great questions, it's still not going to lead to any interesting discussion. And those questions are always going to be curtailed by my lack of knowledge. 
So I think just having an awareness of what the person uh, is doing and what have they already said in their career. I think another thing, I, I listen to a lot of interviews and one of the best traits I notice, or I should say one of the worst traits, I should spend it the other way. One of the worst traits is people will ask the same questions to their guests. Like they don't have that research of what they've already said. Mm -hmm. um, on another note though, you could see the extreme of it um, because sometimes the interviewer will get caught up in their own questions. Uh, uh, an interviewer that is very popular and everybody likes Nardwar, always, you know, mm -hmm. interviewing the rappers like, oh, this, this was your favorite album when you were six years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that kind of shock value of being like, wow, how does he know that? He actually doesn't really offer that much interesting uh, insight because you end up not really learning anything more valuable. He's very quick to, to, to cut people off to say, this is also what I know. Mm. Um, so I think it's important to just the, to be involved in the world that you are attempting to survey or uh, lead other people to get a better understanding uh, by the, the viewers of the audience, get them to have a better understanding uh, and also just be interested in the conversation that it can lead to. What do you think? What do you think makes a good host? I think what you said, man, I think was huge. I think it's so important to, to be aware, at least like a little bit, just the basics, you know, of, of whatever's happening. And I think if you're not aware, which is something that I used to do like way back in the day was I would kind of like fake it and pretend that I was aware. So let's say if you're like a big car enthusiast, you'd be like, oh, you know, my, you know, Corolla GT just crashed, man. But, you know, what do you think of those engines? Like, oh, those engines are ridiculous. I hate when my motor, like, <laughs> like, I don't even know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So I think, I think it's also important when you don't know to just be like, hey, man, I got no clue what you're talking about. You know, at least you should do research. But if you didn't, just be like, hey, I'm not going to BS you. You know, can you explain that to me? I'm not just going to nod my head and pretend to know what you're talking about. So I think that's, that's definitely a big one. That's definitely a big one. And I think, you know, like you said yourself, right? It'd be awkward if, the person just kept cutting you off every time he asked you a question, you know, or sometimes like you'll have someone ask you a question and then they'll just, they're just like, just my, the mind will just drift. And then by the time you finish answering, they'll be like, oh, okay, he's done. Let me ask him. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're just not consciously there. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, let me ask him this question and look out the window for two minutes. <laughs> let me check my phone real quick. Yeah, <laughs> man. Totally. 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 Yeah, I hear you. Uh, how do you think your, your skills as a host have improved? How do you think they've evolved since you've started having people on the podcast? I, uh, I think they've gotten, man, that's good. I've never thought about that one. I've never thought about that one. I just, I always thought myself as just being like, you know, stationary, like just like one, but I'm sure if I would go back to like my first ever podcast with a guest on, I'm sure it'd be this, like, it'd be much better now compared to then. I have to think. Daniel yet oh my god <laughs> yeah 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 seriously oh man uh, yeah I think so man probably I, I would assume hopefully it's gotten a little bit better do you have any different different thoughts about how to how to have guests on or how to or what to talk about with them is your way of thinking about what questions you're gonna ask what discussions different at all you know, man, that's one thing that I, I still haven't figured out. So at first I was like, all right, when I bring someone on, you know, I want to have a set set of questions, you know, me and Adrian are just going to talk about this and it's going to be easy. The follower, you know, can, can follow us, right? The listener will make sense to them. But sometimes, man, like I love the beauties of just veering off a path, you know, like for example, the only thing I knew today was like, oh, I'm definitely going to bring up movies with Adrian. Like, like that was it. I was like, whatever else happens from this conversation, like it'll just beautifully turn into something. And I feel like if I structure it too much, like I really turn into a host, Jimmy Fallon, and I have my questions, you know, I feel like it, it almost takes away some of the organic beauties of a conversation. The negative of that is sometimes if I'm just too, you know, let's go wherever we want to go, we might start talking about like politics and then you start going on a rant about avocados for 10 minutes, you know, which, hey, I don't hate. But if you tune in and be like, oh, this guy's a psychology student. All right, man, time to probably talk about anxiety. And then you're talking about, you know, Donald Trump and then avocados. Like I can see where, you know, might not. Well, what do you think about that, Adrian? What do you think about that? Just a variety of topics that are just all over the place. 
Oh, I don't know. Um, because like it, it, it's good to let the, I guess the guest kind of dictate how the, the conversation will flow because otherwise it will just end up being that Jimmy Fallon, you know, mm. Oh, what, what did you think about making your new album? Yeah. <laughs> uh, same questions as always. Um, like it, it definitely is important to kind of let the conversation go wherever. And I feel like that's where you actually get the, the best moments is when you let it flow. But I mean, it also just depends on the person you're talking to, mm. whether it, if they want to talk about avocados. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard that Kanye and the Joe Rogan podcast they did a few months ago no. good don't do it <laughs> don't do it man it's three hours of just you're, I mean dude like speaking is so important and, and for anyone listening who's a Kanye fan I just put his music to the side for a sec but if you just want to look at an individual who wants to articulate his thoughts man that's like three hours of you listening to a person who has a key to like this beautiful place, but he lost the key. Like, like you're like he's he's telling you about this key, and you're like, I want to understand. But for three hours, man, he's just going in rabbit holes and he he starts one thought and he segues into another thought and he segues into another thought, and, and nothing ever comes to a conclusion, and it's really hard to follow. And I think unfortunately, like that's one of those cases which is just really, and Joe said himself, he's like, I feel like Kanye, like people speak on his behalf a lot. So I really just wanted to sit back and just let him be him. But what you get, which is fair, is I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it's, it's really hard to listen to, man. Like someone who, I've, I don't know if you've had a friend like this, Adrian, but they'll start talking about one story and then it branches into something else and it branches into something else and he starts talking about something else and then he forgets the main reason why he started the story. So he starts the second story, you're still waiting, like it's, Oh man, I think speaking is is so underrated. I think it's grossly underrated, man. Like speaking, like just just talk, just talk well, you know. Like don't don't cut people off, you know. Um, be okay with silence, you know. Think about what kind of words you want to use, whether it's presentation wise, whether it's in front of a group, whether it's just to a friend. I think speaking is so important, right? The word you use, your tone of voice, right? Not to mention your body language, which is with how you speak. I think it's extremely important. I hear you on that one. I feel like how well a person can dictate their ideas is is almost more important than the actual idea itself. Because you could be entirely right about something and we could I could start talking about something that you absolutely agree with. But if I'm presenting it in a haphazard way, then it's going to come off as you kind of wanting to disagree. Like you're going to end up wanting to go like, oh, well, not quite. But if someone's speaking on something that you, you don't agree with, uh, but they're wording it well, they, they just have a organized way of speaking, then it makes you just want to listen to their idea. Even if you like know that it's like, oh, I don't think this is the best idea. It's still much more interesting. Completely, yeah. man. And it's a shame because I feel like, you know, what if you have a legitimately great idea? It'd be a shame that people wouldn't hear you just because you don't, you know, articulate it as well. And that's just tragic, man. Like, that's absolute tragedy for me. Like, like there. okay, I'm not going to say, I was about to say there's very few things worse than that in the world, but I think I'm exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Going back to films, actually, one thing that I've gotten really into recently is reading very, very well-written negative reviews of movies that I love. Oh, tell me about it. Tell right? me. Let me hear this. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'll see something and I'll go, that was undeniably 10 out of 10. That's the peak of, that's artistic beauty. And I will go, I can't imagine somebody seeing that is bad. And then I'll go on uh, Letterboxd, which is an app for films. I don't know if you're familiar, that I use, yeah. I use a lot. And I'll just look through the popular reviews and I'll see one that is just like, oh, three out of 10. This movie lacks any substance whatsoever. And it will just go into it detail by detail. And it, they're always so well written that by the end of it, even though I don't agree, I end up either appreciating uh, the film more. Somehow, I don't understand how that works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Or I'll, you know, I'll make concessions and I'll go, okay, well, I can see what you're talking about with that specifically. Um, 
like for example um parasite did you see parasite last year or two years ago i did not my friend but i heard it had oh. a big buzz around it yeah. <laughs> okay um it's incredible i'm not going to spoil anything but there's a moment in it um that undercuts or undermines the like the central message of it greatly right i i it's a i don't want to spoil anything so i can't talk about it that much <laughs> especially because people were gonna be listening and they probably some of them haven't seen it either uh-huh. um but there's just a moment that the, the, the film presents a thesis and it just breaks it it just completely yeah. breaks it so I, I still think it the film works as a whole but it's like the the themes of it don't exactly melt the other as nice as they could very interesting <laughs> i love it <laughs> that's good man good for you adrian good for you for going out of your way to find people who, who disagree with you in that sense like it's something that you absolutely love because it takes i don't know what the term is but but it's not easy listening to someone criticize something that you hold so highly you know that you hold on a pedestal that you completely disagree with yeah man but it is good it is good i um man what was i gonna say uh, did you have you seen social dilemma by any chance no no, all right, man. They're just a, a tiny piece of it that I was talking about was like if um, you know Google found out that you're a Donald Trump fan, if you were to go to Google and type in Donald Trump is, all those suggestions would be things that would be pro Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a genius. Donald Trump is you know misrepresented. Donald Trump is X. But if it found out, let's say that you're subscribed to you know uh, magazines and stuff which are anti-Trump. If you type in Donald Trump, it would type in things like, you know, Donald Trump is a fascist, Donald Trump's homophobic and X, Y, Z. So I feel like, you know, what we thought with the emerging of Internet is you'd be more exposed to differing opinions. But really what ends up happening is with these algorithms is they it's very easy to find things that already agree with you. Right. Like if they know, you know, that I'm a vegetarian, Facebook isn't going to show me, you know, some meat barbecue festival because they're worried that I might see it and that I might click off. So indirectly, what you end up happening is so many people who don't do what you do. And I think, man, we really lose something when we don't do what you do, you know, when we don't look at other people's perspectives. I, I had a very similar thing, you know, a podcast I'm a huge fan of is Joe Rogan's. And he had Kevin Hart on this one time, and I absolutely loved it. I was like, man, this is an amazing podcast. And then what I proceeded to do was I watched a 20-minute video of these two guys just critiquing the whole podcast, saying how much it sucked saying how fake Kevin Hart is, saying how blah, 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 blah. And as I'm listening to it, like, it's so hard. It was hard for me anyways to not think, oh, you know, you don't know anything, you know, you blah, blah, blah. Or you, but it's like, yeah, man, let's really listen to his points. And like, where is he coming from? And, you know, even if you disagree with a lot of them, you, I think seeking to understand is, is criminally underrated, man. Seeking to truly, absolutely understand the other side, which disagrees, I think is so underrated and I think it is so important to do not to agree because a lot of people will listen and they're like, Oh, you're so gullible. Then you'll agree with everyone. You don't have to agree, but, but you have to understand. I feel like you have to give them a seat at the table and at least at the very least, listen to the full argument without bias or preconceived notions of, you know, no matter what you say, I already have my conclusion. What do you think about that? Adrian? I mean, I definitely can see a lot of value in that just being able to unbiasedly hear someone out. And I think it also demonstrates a a greater love or appreciation of the thing that is being critiqued. Um, because if you didn't have like a like a deep, thorough passion about it, then it, it you don't have that natural gut feeling that's telling you to listen, but you know, really uh oh man i don't even know how to put it (laughs) take your time take your time Um, that's what we do um here let me let me let me back it up so if you don't have like that thorough passion about what is being discussed then when you hear something that's negative it it can it can sway you more um in like that that gut reaction Mm -hmm. and having those little ups and downs say if you had were a big fan of that kevin hart joe rogan podcast those little like, oh, I, I disagree with you completely. Oh, you make a great point. All right, I disagree with you completely. You make a great point. Just having those ups and downs 
can lead to like a weird perception of the thing that you're talking about. But if you actually have like a true conviction about something and you you really are passionate about it, then you're able to hear it and see the critique more as a whole um, and not be as reactionary to it, which can lead to more valuable uh, thought about what the actual work is itself. So you could see that the original podcast and you could love it. And then you could watch the critique and go, okay, I get what you mean. It's bad here, here, and here, but I can still find value in this. Whereas if you if you were passionate about it and you hated that video, but you thought they made a good point, you might go, okay, well, uh, this guy's an idiot, but Kevin Hart's also an idiot. Oh. You're to find that medium when you are able to view criticism as inevitable and important to your appreciation. That makes so much sense. Like, like you don't have that gut feeling, that like emotional reaction anymore to it. Very interesting. I've never thought about that. That's so interesting. Oh man. Wow. That was beautiful. Oh my goodness. Gold by Mr. Agent. And that's why we have you on my friend. Wow. That is so cool, <laughs> man. You're so right. See, like, like even that man, just the, the beauty of how, like, I would have never been able to say that. Like the way that you did, the way that you put those words together and the way that you, you showed the examples and man, that's so cool. You're right. You're absolutely right. Wow. That's incredible, man. That's incredible. I like sometimes I want to say something, but it's just like, let me just sit in this amazingness. Like, let me just, just sit in awe and just, wow, just really soak that in. My friends, for everyone listening, like, like it's so easy to just say something and then just keep talking and blah, blah, blah. But every once in a while, when someone says something that's super badass, like my friend Adrian here, just sit, just divulge what he just said. You know, think of a time where you really listen to something that completely disagreed with your thoughts. And what was your reaction to it? Like, it, like you know, we were talking about, was it, was it that gut amount, that, you know, kind of gut reaction, you know, that, nope, absolutely not. You know, was it, was it more accepting? And how did you look, and, and based off of someone's critique, how do you look at that movie or that play or that podcast afterwards? You know, does it impact your view now? Now that you're aware of said critique, or maybe it doesn't at all. Or maybe it completely impacts it and you go, you know what? I was completely looking at it differently. I 100% agree with this critique. That's important. These are very important conversations. And I think Adrian, me, you, and the two other people that listen to this podcast are going to really walk away with a lot of knowledge. <laughs> me, you, my neighbor, Bart, and uh, maybe my cousin. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's hilarious, man. Oh, that was good. That was good. Uh, Adrian, my man, is there something that, that we haven't talked about? Is there something that, that, you, that you want to discuss? Something, something that's on your mind, something that's like burning, that you're like, oh, man, this is one thing I would love to share or get Daniel's opinion on or anything, anything in that matter. Because I have something, but, but I want to hear yours first. Okay. Uh, uh, nothing, nothing pops to mind. So I'm, I'm curious about what you have to... What do you... All right, Adrian, brother, I need your advice. And, and I want to say this here because I, I think you're, I think hearing it from you would be good for me, not only because you're my friend, but I believe that you're a very sensible and logical and rational person. And for the people listening, I think it'll be good education. Adrian, my friend, in the last little while, I felt a decrease in my patience. I don't know what it is. I just, I'm not as patient as I used to be. In the last month or two months or so, I, I feel I get irritated easier. I feel as I get stressed out easier. I feel as if I just, I, man, like, like the Daniel from six months ago, you know, who could just sit in a conversation with someone and just kind of be cool and calm and collected. Like he's gone. Like he's out the window. This Daniel, he gets riled up really, really easily. And believe it or not, Mr. Positivity, Mr. Smiley Miley, he loses his cool more than he'd like to admit. But it's only happened recently, like only like in the last month or so. And Mike, uh, the thing I want to ask you is, Adrian, when you think about emotions and expressing emotions, what, what are your thoughts on like expressing anger or expressing sadness? Do you think like, are those things that you partake in? Like not saying that like, you know, I don't believe in emotions, but, but in a sense of like, or, or do you value more kind of that stoic? Like, no, it happens, but you kind of let it come and go. 
you know, you're not going to sit there for two hours just crying it out or, or like if you're angry, you're going to try to cool it down or, or I don't know, maybe just you don't get that angry off them. Like maybe, like maybe like little things just like, how do you, I guess what I want to ask is, how do you respond to stress in your life? Stress. Um, well, it's kind of different. I, if we're talking about the type of stress that builds up slowly, you know, might be, you know, a pressure of something of some exam coming up. Um, I honestly don't think I handle it that well, uh, just when it's something that's, that's slow. Uh, but when it's something in an everyday life, like getting angry, um, I have this just habit of just biting my tongue. So I don't speak when I'm angry. I, I really, I can't even begin to speak. Um, so if I get angry, it, I think I handle it well. Um, I'd rather not get angry at all. Uh, but you know, I, I just, I won't say a thing. <laughs> and I find that that works for me uh, in dealing with that. It just gives me the time to, to cool off, to really prepare what I want to say so that I'm not making any rash decisions. Um, the, the sadness part, I, I'm not quite sure how to answer it because, you know, things come and they go and that's just kind of the way it is. But I, those moments give me a lot of clarity as to what was going on before that I had so much appreciation for. So in those moments, I always find a nice balance of going, hey, sure, this happens and it sucks, but uh, just makes me grateful and aware of all that was in my life before that was leading to me being completely ignorant of that feeling. Have you always thought like this, Adrian? I feel like uh, when I was younger, I didn't have any thoughts on the matter. I just kind of had like that caveman, like, oh, angry or oh, sad. <laughs> uh, um, so I guess as long as I can remember, I've thought that way, but I know that it hasn't always been a thought process that I had. Very interesting. Good, man. I, I, how important do you think that is, Adrian, to have that sort of a mindset with respect to emotions? I feel like I can't speak for everybody because uh, everybody experiences their emotions differently. It's all relative. So I could say for me, it is very important to have that mindset and it keeps me positive. But I, I don't even know about you, how you experience these things. So I can't say for certain what I, if I think it would be important for you to have the same mindset. Interesting. Very interesting. I, I think an amazing thing that you get, Adrian, from like watching movies and stuff is that, and it goes back to this idea of like how you treat genres, right? How, like you don't believe in like, oh, you know, I just, you know, horror genre sucks, you know, or comedy genre sucks. I feel like because you're so welcoming of that, it makes you extremely welcoming of, of all sides of a perspective. So not just your own perspective. That's why you're able to like l look at criticism and look at other people's views. And I feel like that sort of mentality of so much respect and awareness for the way that other people see the world is such an unbelievably amazing strength for you, Adrian. And the sense that, you know, like you said earlier, right? Like with movies, you used to be like, oh, you know, if you don't appreciate The Godfather, you just have no taste for movies. And how that guy had just kind of developed into this person of like, you know, like, like you respect other people's ways of life and the way that they look at life. And it might be different from you or just because you're doing it right. Someone might be looking at you and be like, man, like they could be doing this, this, and this. Like, I don't know why they're not doing it. And I think, man, just the awareness of other people's perspectives is so valuable, dude. Like, as you're saying, like, like I thought, like, I think I'm aware of perspectives, but definitely not as much until like we're having this conversation right now, because I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel like when I was younger, like I definitely thought I was better than I actually was. And then the older I got and the more people's perspectives I started to think about, I realized how many like flaws I have and how much you can improve and how much, you know, people disagree on things. And you're just kind of like, wow, you know, like, like you really like, I'm like, I'm, I'm nothing. Like I'm a speck, 
You know, you really like you look at the big picture or you try to anyway. And you're like, whoa, like there's so much I don't know. You know, and there's so much that people know more than me, like on, on, on so many subjects that I can't even name. How did I get into this conversation? Adrian, what am I talking about? How did I get here? <laughs> what did you say? Oh, man. <laughs> okay. How did we get I here, man? <laughs> oh, geez. Sorry, That's buddy. The beauty of it. It flows, as we were talking about with good interviewers. It flows, yeah. Now let's talk about avocados, man. Healthy fat, <laughs> incredible. Incredible. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And another thing to think about that I think is important mm -hmm. is... Uh, so you think about, so what's something that you're passionate on and you think am, you're knowledgeable on? I am passionate and knowledgeable on, man, um, can I say, honestly, can I just say speaking, talking, like, like presenting in front of people? Okay, yeah. And did did you feel the same kind of uh, confidence in your own knowledge uh, three years ago? No way. Um, when do you think you're, when do you think you felt confident in it? Well, actually, let me, let me uh, rephrase that issue. I've always felt confident in it, but what I meant to say was just, I felt like my confidence has risen over time, but, but you're right. Three years ago, I did feel confident in it as well. You're right. So let's go back a little bit further. I remember in middle school, we had a, uh, science presentation, uh, we Holy the same shoot. School, yeah? and then you, you, you were the MC, right? Amazing man. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're great at it, right? And you probably, you know, you're proud of yourself, presumably, because you mm -hmm. did a great job. Um, Thank you, buddy. But you're, you're aware of the fact that then you had confidence in it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now you can look back at what you thought and what you knew about presenting and public speaking, and you can go, I really didn't know that much. Mm -hmm. I don't want to assume, but do you feel that way? 100%. Like you kind of look at it, 100%. Yeah, yeah. But you knew you were confident then right mm -hmm. and you knew yes. that you believed that you were doing good so who's to say that right now you're, you're not going to look back at this moment in 2024 and go he doesn't know what he's talking about right so whenever i think that way it always makes me hesitant to treat oh. my own ideas as fact because i know that going back to movies when i was 16 years old i was absolutely sure that my opinions were 100 percent correct and now I look back at myself and I'm like, he was an idiot. He knew nothing. <laughs> I haven't seen any movies in the world. <laughs> I remember seeing Vertigo, the movie that Sight and Soundful names the greatest movie of all time. And I went, that's it? That's like a seven out of 10 at best. It's a, not about anything. It's not important, right? That shouldn't deserve the title, right? Uh -huh. And if you had told me you're wrong, I would have doubled down, right? Mm -hmm. But now I can look back and go, Come on. <laughs> wow. um, so having that in mind, it always makes me think of my own uh, convictions and my own confidence with just this grain of salt that I know that in the future, I will know more and I don't want to say anything that I'll end up regretting. That's amazing. I think, ev I think everyone should do that, man. I think everybody should think about that. They should think about how they looked at themselves three, four, five years ago. And think about it, like you said, you know, in 2024, 2026, if you look back on yourself now, chances are, you know, you're just going to pick yourself apart. That is so important, man. That is so unbelievably important. I, I would recommend that to everybody, even myself, especially. I think that is so important, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I think, um, I think there's, there's some real beauty into just, you know, moving forward in life with the assumption that, hey, what are the chances I'm wrong about this? Like, if you just keep that in the back of your mind, like, what are the possibilities I'm wrong? I'm not saying you're wrong all the time. And I'm not saying, again, you should be naive and just always take another person's opinion. But I feel like it's an important thought to have, man. Like, how do I know I'm, I'm right about this? Like, what are the chances I'm wrong? And I think, you know, just that in the back of the mind, I think it's, it makes you hesitant, but in a good way, in a cautious way. I think that that's super powerful. I think that's some really good advice, man. That's awesome. That is really, really awesome. So Adrian, man, when are you opening up your office? Like, the <laughs> when are you opening up? Can I be the first, can I be the first client? <laughs> first line? Well, I don't know if I'm quite qualified. 
Could you imagine, like, Adrian, like, let's say, man, like, you open up a therapy office, right? I show up, right? I'm, like, first day there, you know, and, like, and you're, like, whoa, you know, it's crazy to see you. I'm, like, yeah, I know. And, like, I've got, like, a hat on because I don't want other people to see me because, God forbid, Daniel teaches, doesn't have it figured it out. And I'm sitting there, I'm, like, Adrian, I'm sick of it, man. I'm sick of all those fucking people on my posts. And you're, like, well, what do you mean, man? And, like, <laughs> I'm responding to these stupid comments and blah, and this fake smile. I'm sick of it, man. I'm done being fake. Like, could you imagine? And there's, like, a little camera in the room, and you're recording the post <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness man that'd be hilarious that'd be so funny holy shoot i think it'd be kind of crazy if like five ten years people find out i have like a like a dart at home and like i have people's faces on there and like i'm actually like super like the most negative guy ever and i'm i hate kids and i, I hate life <laughs> and just smile like, hi everybody and just just hate man that'd be hilarious oh man oh goodness <laughs> Ah, well, that'd be something. Exposed. <laughs> uh, what was that, Adrian? Daniel teaches gets exposed. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be hilarious, dude. That'd be hilarious. Goodness. Oh man. Uh, Adrian, my friend, I, uh, I I really loved having you on today, man. I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I I loved everything that we talked about. Yeah, it was a great. It was a pleasure. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Hey, listeners, thank you so much for listening to me and my friend, Adrian. Hey, Adrian, man, listen, I know that you're not the biggest, like, influencer, you know, or I don't know if you're shooting to have a million followers, but from the people who are listening to you today that just fell in love with your voice and your ideology, where, where can they find you? Where can they find you on the web? The web? Oh, geez. I never have had to pro myself before. <laughs> <laughs> what are the plugs? Uh, uh, so, if you want to you know, if you want to find me on Instagram, it's Adrian, it's B-Y dot R-N-E. That's Adrian Byrne with a dot in the middle. And you can look up the same name on Letterboxd if you want to see my movie reviews and critique me for knowing nothing. That's okay, too. I'll take that as well. <laughs> awesome, buddy. Awesome. Adrian, brother, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so, so very much. Great to be on. Awesome. Thanks, sisters. This has been another episode. I hope you enjoyed. Take care of yourself.